And part four. Um, turns out the community itself, uh, I've noticed a lot of connections. The more awake I am, the more I'm figuring stuff out uh, when it comes to, for instance, my best friend and her father. Her father knows my stepdad. And because it's such a small, well, I wouldn't say small city, but um, so the Georgian Bay area up north is where my family had their cottage, my mom's side. Okay, and that's something that I was skeptical about. Uh, whatever happened to the cottage, why they decided to sell it, um, whether or not it was in my nono's will, and that whole thing to do with my nono passing away and everything. There's a lot of secrets there that I've been given insight into, but unless anybody admits it, I was very young at the time. Um, so when it comes to that, that was up north, and it turns out that the people I'm meeting in my life, even uh, the individual living downstairs from me, all are from the Georgian Bay area. As I said before, my stepfather was adopted, and it turns out that the individual also living downstairs was adopted, and uh, he's from, uh, you know, I don't know if it's Honey Harbor or Georgian Bay. Anyways, that whole thing up there and a lot of ties to do with up there and then same goes with my doctor um it was actually a male gynecologist uh, i never thought things were weird for the longest time about that um it same one that told my mom nothing happened now he could have just been saying that to save her the trouble but i don't think uh i'm not familiar that doctors lie about that sort of thing anyways um uh and then new people i would meet in my life as well they would tell me that they're from that area and i'm like hmm it's very odd they're all seem to be connected and uh, the person that i ended up working for a while back that person knew my best friend's father who knew my stepfather and then when it came to my social media my not so much my mom she kind of joined in later but my stepfather was um, very active in all my social media he added a lot of my friends um, to now you would think this is harmless but he added a lot of my friends to his uh, Facebook for example and he would message and comment them but sometimes it would get so out of hand that the things were um i say um a lot sometimes it would get so out of hand that i would have to threaten him and tell him and i actually have blocked him several times for the inappropriate comments made um obviously because of his own traumas and what he went through um the grooming and everything that happens that's passed down uh, sexually wise he at some point believes that this is okay to do even though I'm pretty sure he's smart enough to know that that is not acceptable um, so uh, he would make comments to my friends um, the inappropriate touching comments he made to me um, as far as I know there was never any physical contact with my stepfather but a lot of exposure and uh, when it comes to the 5D, that's a whole other thing in itself um, when it comes to astral projecting and invasion of uh, dream space and stuff like that. But uh, let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, so I would have to give him warnings for that. And um, he seemed to be very involved in a lot of my life. Uh, especially when it came to certain things. Um, my grandmother was on board. She was on board with some of this stuff. And I realize now, um, even in one of the photo albums, um, like I said, she had them strategically placed. She would put certain messages and stuff like that. She's very aware of how to manipulate energy. My matriarch, uh, Nona, my grandmother, on my mom's side, very familiar. 
uh, how to manipulate energy and how to place it on others so that she doesn't have to herself carry, even through clothing. Uh, some of the stuff I'm learning that she's capable of doing, she would never openly admit it because I'm not supposed to know this stuff. But uh, she's taught her daughters how to do a lot of this sort of thing. And um, whether or not you believe me, that's up to you. If you do not want to listen to this, you can click off the channel. Right? And if you are familiar with the sort of things that I'm discussing, then please keep watching. This will probably be the last video. So it'll be four out of four. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, my stepfather was heavily integrated into my life, including, um, when it came to my lovers down to my fiance, even. And as I stated before, my ex fiance, he was also from a family that was heavily, um, involved in a lot of this energy manipulation and cult stuff and masonry, masonry. I'm having a hard time speaking right now. And, um, to the point where he was stripped of his voice and ability to stand up for himself, let alone anybody else. So, um, I think he's still currently under uh, the control of certain individuals, but that's not my problem anymore. He is not in my life. And I got out of that just in the nick of time, I believe. Uh, my stepfather had been in communication with my mother-in-law to be at the time, my ex-mother-in-law. And, uh, after the separation, after the wedding was called off, after I pulled my energy away from a lot of people, I asked my stepfather and my mother if they could please remove my ex-mother-in-law. Uh, but he refused to do so and he wanted to keep in communication. And I was like, well, uh, that's fine. So I had to just remove everybody from and block from my social media because they were not respecting my boundaries um, it was a simple request anyways that aside uh, the comments got so far as um, when it comes to my own friends you know I'm sure they laughed off and whatever but it's not acceptable and I even remember a friend of mine a good friend of mine I miss her so much uh, my parents ended up coming to a party I had. This was around when I was like 16. I had a party with my friend and her and her younger sister and her older sister were there. She was like the middle. My friend, they had this like party. There was a bonfire and everything and drinking and stuff. And my parents ended up, um, what do you call that? Crashing the party. They showed up. Uh, they partied with us kids and everything like that. And my stepfather was making inappropriate gestures to my friend's younger sister at the time and made her feel very uncomfortable. And, you know, at the point where a lot of comments that were said. And anyways, you get where I'm going with this. It got out of hand and it didn't matter how much I tried to stand up for myself for say things. Um, it was not respected and this continued. And it had been a part of my life since at least the age of six. So that sort of exposure did not help the decisions I made as a young child either. And a lot of things uh, happened even when it came to me and my cousin, I think we were around 13, 14 years old, sneaking out of the house when I went to visit my father in Toronto and stuff like that. And we met up with the, I believe they were in the thirties. They were in their thirties and to me, I just uh, went through the motions. I didn't even enjoy any sexual contact. But at that point, I had already lost my virginity. So um, I went because my cousin knew the city of Toronto. And she spoke to these men. And we just met up. And back in the day, like uh, this sort of thing happened. Uh, people would sneak out of their house and do this sort of thing, right? Like, But uh, yeah, that was all found out. And was given an ultimatum to tell my parents. Uh, one of the good things I can say about my mother, she put me on the pill early. I was 13, no, I was 14 years old. 14 years old when she put me on the pill and I was on the pill for like years, 18 plus years, but um, uh, so there's that. And then 
one of my friends, my ex-friends, um, she broke up with her boyfriend and then I broke up with my boyfriend at the time after seven years, I think it was. And we, I was single and then her ex had come over. He wanted to chill and, uh, he listened to me cry for like two fucking hours and we ended up hooking up and, um, she ended up taking me to a nightclub. Um, not sure. I didn't know at this time that she was aware of this, but she took me to a nightclub and I was her sacrifice. She actually knew these, these this group of men and she, um, Either they did or she did put something in my drink and uh, she claimed that she lost track of me for like an hour. But anyway, she took me back to these people's place that she knew. Um, they gang raped me and then in the morning when I woke up and came to, they were still raping me. Uh, I ended up not saying anything. I put my clothes all on and I complained there was nothing to put in the coffee and she told me to be more respectful because we were company. Uh, and she ended up marrying one of those individuals, I think, from that group. But I was a sacrifice. Um, and so a lot of shit like that happened to me because I was not aware of certain things, especially when it comes to sacrificing people for certain things. Um, yeah, a lot of shit. A lot of shit transpired. A lot of shit happened. But I was heavily... When I say heavily, I was heavily brainwashed. And I was like a write-off. I was supposed to be the scapegoat. I was supposed to pass away several times, I think. I was supposed to be sacrificed. And yet, I kept being saved over and over again. I was supposed to be here. Apparently, um, at least at least 8 to 12 times, I should have been gone already. And I had my ass saved every freaking time. But <laughs> the amount, oh, the amount of questionable situations. At one point, uh, my parents see they owned, they did their thing. They owned horses, and I went on a trail ride. And I remember stating to them, I was like, "Hey, these reins look great." I was like, "I hope they don't break." And we were on the trail ride, and I was put to the back of the line and we ended up taking off and running like a straightaway, right? The rain snapped and I ended up falling off. I pulled her in a circle like I was taught. I fell off. Luckily, uh, I think it was Tatiana or something like that. The horse stayed there and she waited for me. I had the wind knocked out of me. It took me a while to come to. The group had already gone ahead of me. And so the reins had snapped and that could have been very, very bad. I believe I bruised my tailbone severely, but I could have uh, died. But um, So I got back up on the horse. I tied the reins together, the broken leather. I tied it together. Got back on the horse. And then as I was starting a slow jog, I was in a lot of pain. I just came to, like, luckily my horse waited for me and I seen this shiny thing and I get back off of the horse, stop or get back off the horse, I pick it up, it's somebody's keys, get back on the horse, and then I catch up to the rest of the group, and then all I said was, hey, somebody lost their keys, and then uh, my mom's like, well, I'm going to head back, she's like, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to go back, and I said, I'm going to just keep, keep on the rest of the trail, and I was sore for like weeks after that, but no discussion about that, um, there was so many circumstances, the edge of a cliff almost, and just putting us in so many circumstances where it was like life or death, and I survived, and um, yeah, yeah, so it's getting at 14 minutes. Okay, try to speed this up a bit. What else? Oh, when it comes to the connections with the people, yeah, uh, a lot of them are in the Masonic. Um, masonry. I'm not saying everybody from there is bad. There are good ascended masters. There are people with good intentions and people that have done their own shadow work and that have got to this point that they are uh, healed enough. Um, but there are some with malintent that have not healed 
that continue to keep this veil over people and continue to manipulate energies and continue continue to send energy to people in order to harm them or to have them in a state of confusion so that they can continue harvesting from them or stealing or taking whatever. Um, when it comes to inheritance, um, each of us, you know, can have an inheritance passed down from a loved one and it doesn't have to be in the form of money. That's all I'll say about that. It can be other things as well. And I believe that I'm supposed to, uh, there were certain things past me and there's certain things I'm learning my own gifts and abilities and stuff like that, that I've had since very young that they try to keep from me and, uh, try to have me like not tap in or use any of those gifts and that's especially when it comes to just uh, the aware the awareness of energies and the images that I get and stuff like that and knowing things that people haven't told me and then saying something and then having them all fucking weirded out or whatever so I know at a very young age I was told to just like you don't know what you're talking about like uh, dismiss, dismiss, right? And I was played off to be um, a special child. <laughs> I was played off to be the write-off, um, like a, a sacrifice. And um, I gave nothing but unconditional love to everybody around me, no matter how upset I got. I didn't go out of my way to try to sabotage people. I didn't go out of my way to try to steal from them their inner light. I didn't go out of my way to do any harm to anybody like not to the extent that that these people have done to me um and uh i just continued to keep loving people and seeing both their sides uh, uh looking past it until finally the universe myself sat my ass down and had me pull away and uh, cancel an eight-year relationship, end a marriage, like I was supposed to be getting married, right? End a wedding and pull my energy away from any, everybody all at once, friends, family, you name it. And um, manifest an ending of a decade's worth of, worth of a job and just literally retract myself completely from everything and everyone and had like a complete intervention and then finally acknowledge my self-worth my value, everything that I bring to the table, all the love that I have to give unconditionally, the abundance that I have, the amount of good luck that I bring in towards me that other people seem to be reaping the rewards of, um, everything I touch. It just seems to, you know, I, I can create stuff with not just my hands. I'm not just talking about painting, but um, manifesting things in towards me, but I was kept in such a low vibrational frequency that everything that I was manifesting up until this very point was being held back and, and delayed from coming into me. And I was literally standing in my own way because of the amount of heavy brainwashing and stall work that was done on me. And you don't have to believe any of this. But I am stating this outright. I have four parts to this and I'm going to try to upload them and see how it goes. If you've experienced any of this, I want you to know that there are a lot of things set up in the system to keep certain people from being aware of this or to doubt and question themselves constantly. So they stay under the spell work. And one of the downloads I got uh, when I was pushed to my very point of questioning right um reality itself because breaking out of that sort of matrix is, is definitely a fucking shock to the system um but an image came to my mind with these people being that are chemically imbalanced being sent to facilities and stuff like that and uh the ones that are extremely out of the control what do they do to those people Yes, they sedate them and stuff like that. But what do they actually do when it comes to the vest? What does the vest symbolize? The Xing, the crossing over of the chest. Symbolic. People that know the reference of this. But they also go far as far as to put it underneath them. It's literally forcing those individuals to hug themselves. Self. Soothe. And they are forced to hug themselves, literally. 
they got to the point of a breaking point where they were put in a position to hug themselves. And when I came to that sort of realization, I was like, wow, that's heartbreaking for a person to be pushed to that extreme. I managed to escape what I did. And I don't know if I'll be able to post anything after this or if YouTube will even let me post. But this is my fucking life. This is my fucking story. And I have free speech. Safe to speak.